What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to your stimulus check update, stimulus package update, and infrastructure update and daily news report for Friday, May 14th. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful Friday. If you can, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Now, Bernie Sanders says that we do not have a work shortage here in the United States. We actually have a livable wage crisis that we are currently dealing with. President Biden stated that after his meetings the past couple of days that he is optimistic about a potential upcoming bipartisan deal, but Republican leader Mitch McConnell says that the two sides could not agree on the on the basic parts of the infrastructure bill, so right now he is not so optimistic that a deal gets done. We also know there is a new $50 per month broadband internet credit that most Americans could possibly qualify for, and I'll address that later on. We know there are currently 16 states that will be getting rid of the federal unemployment benefits starting in the middle of June, and Democrats are continuing to push for additional stimulus checks because they say right now the American people are struggling to get back to their normal lives. So again, just want to thank you guys for watching. If you could hit that like button, it really does help out the channel. Now, Let's first start off by talking about the unemployment situation because as of right now, there's a lot of moving parts to this and this is actually causing some lawmakers to say, okay, if we get rid of unemployment, that means we have to provide additional assistance and relief, which as of right now, the easiest way to do that is to provide an additional stimulus check. So there are more and more reasons why uh, an additional or a fourth stimulus check is being discussed. But again, there's no guarantees that this actually passes. So here's what we know. Right now, Senator Bernie Sanders and fellow Democrats say that unemployment issue is caused by low non-livable wages. They say that if the companies, if these businesses were to pay a livable wage, not $7.25 an hour, but around $15 per hour, then the American people would be glad to go back to work. And then we got Republicans that say that no, that right now the crisis that we have is due to the fact that the federal government stepped in and provided too high of an income for people just to stay at home. Now, whether this is right or wrong, whether you're you know, siding with Republicans or Democrats, honestly doesn't matter at this time. All that matters is the American people should be looked at as the priority. If they are not, then experts say the economy will suffer. Something else that we know, and again, it doesn't matter who's at fault here, but what we know is that these benefits are going to ex be expiring fairly soon. In, in a month, we are going to see some states just cancel their federal unemployment benefits. This means people on pandemic unemployment assistance will be cut off. People that have exceeded their you know, maximum allotted time on unemployment will be cut off. People that get the $300 per week boost, which is everybody, will be cut off. So the only people that will continue to receive any unemployment benefits are those that have gone on unemployment just recently. Anyone else has been on unemployment for over a year will be completely cut off. So somebody asked the other day, can I at least talk about the different states? So I'm going to address and pretty much give you the list of the 16 states as of this morning. Okay. This is as of this morning. Keep that in mind because I have a feeling today and possibly this weekend, we are going to see more states, more governors come out and say that they are going to jump on board with the GOP and they will be canceling unemployment benefits as well. So the current states are, and this is in order, in alphabetic order, it's Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Georgia, Idaho, Iowa, Montana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Ohio, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, and Wyoming. Those are the states as of right now. Again, this is all going to be happening fairly soon. Every single one of these states is going to be ending their unemployment benefits in June. And I want to re reiterate that because this is key. If this ends in June, right now, the current administration, Nancy Pelosi, uh, leader Chuck Schumer, they all want to get this infrastructure bill done by the 4th of July. 
They want to get it done by that time because that would actually give them enough time to work on other things before they go on recess. Right now, some experts are saying that they find it very difficult to get this infrastructure pack package passed before uh, Congress goes on recess for the entire month of August. So if this happens, it will be devastating to many because not only will we have no infrastructure package being worked out and possibly being uh, put into place, but we're also going to lose unemployment benefits. There might be, there might be, or there might not be any additional talks on stimulus checks. Right? We are going to be 100% reliant if you want additional assistance. It's going to come down to the cities, the counties, and the states. That's where things are going to get tricky because, and this happened last time, that there was a lot of cities, there's a lot of counties, and a handful of states that provided additional assistance, whether it was uh, you know, additional rental assistance, uh, things for utilities, internet, uh, there was gas credits that you could get in uh, some cities. There was also obviously you know, stimulus checks, but there was, there was a bunch of different things, you know, hazard pay, things you know, being tossed around, different ideas. And so the reason I bring this up is because it's very difficult Especially from from my standpoint, uh, every single one of you that watch this video, you're you're in a different city. You're not all in the same city. You're not all in the same state or county. So because of that, it makes it very difficult for me or for the media to come out and say, "Hey, all you guys in you know Memphis, Tennessee, we have additional assistance for you. Here's how you apply." So I just want you to keep that in mind. I'm gonna tr try to do my best as more cities, counties, and states do implement different changes and provide additional assistance. So all you gotta do, first off, make sure you hit that like button on this video, but also make sure you click that subscribe button down below so that you can stay updated on all the new news that we are hearing. So uh, if you can do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Now, what I can tell you right now is that even though there's a lot of things that are going to be ending very soon, about, I think it's like 1.9 million Americans are going to lose their unemployment benefits in the next month. Just yesterday, that total was about 800 to 900,000 people. So it more than doubled in less than 24 hours. So I bring this up because even though some benefits are going to be expiring or be ending, there are other benefits that are just starting. For example, there's a new $50 per month broadband internet credit that you could get. There's also, okay, if you can do if you do qualify for this, there's also money allotted for up to $100 to help you buy a new computer or other equipment. So that's actually pretty good there. Uh, the FCC is providing a temporary discount on monthly internet bills. And so in order for you to qualify, you need to be able to prove that you are uh, a lower income individual or family, you have been negatively impacted by the pandemic, or you can automatically qualify. And this is the good one. This is where things get very easy to actually apply, is you can automatically qualify if your child receives free or reduced meals at school, that's one way. If you're on SNAP benefits, that's a second way. If you are on Medicaid, SSI, or you live in federally uh, public housing, then yes, you do automatically qualify for this up to $50 per month in broadband internet. This is a credit. Now, what you need to keep in mind is if, you're, if you pay, let's say, $30 per month, then the FCC is going to give you $30. They're not gonna give you 50 and you make 20 bucks off of this. So if you pay $65 a month, or let's just say, you know, what do I pay? I pay, I think it's like, like $115 a month or something like that uh, for my internet. If I were to qualify, then I would get $50, up to $50, okay? So instead of $115, I would pay, what is that, $65 um, you know, per month because I got that $50 credit. So that's kind of where things you know come into play. So if you do want this, if you uh, maybe qualify, all you or you want more information on, all you gotta do is go to getemergencybroadband.org and you can find all the information there. Or just go to Google and type in $50 broadband internet credit, and you'll find the information there as well. So and I understand this is not going to be seen as a lot of money to many people, but the fact of the matter is this is monthly. And one of the 
biggest issues that I've seen, uh, you know, just looking over, you know, finances for a lot of people is I've seen the issue and the downfall with these, these families and individuals is they have too many, uh, you know, monthly payments that they have to keep making, whether it's a credit card, a car, a mortgage, you know, internet, you know, phone bill, whatever. There's just too many monthly payments. So by reducing some of your monthly payments, even though it's a small amount, let's say only $50 a month, at the end of the year, that's $600 that you just saved. So that's actually pretty good. And this $50 could be used for anything. You could use this money for, let's say, you know, feeding your family. Uh, this could be the difference between uh, eating or starving for possibly a week. So again, it's, it's something. And if you need the help, go and get it. And this is also the reason why Democrats say another stimulus check is needed because the American people aren't just suffering, uh, you know, with food. They're not just suffering to pay their bills and struggling to pay the bills. They're suffering because there are things that they continue to pay for that they need, like a cell phone. Even though some people say a cell phone is a luxury, you don't need a cell phone. For me personally, I don't go anywhere without my phone because what if there's an emergency? Somebody has to get a hold of me or I need to get a hold of somebody else or let's say somebody uh, you know hits my car and I need to call someone to you know figure out, hey, can I even drive this? Is it safe or should I get it towed? And so there, there's a lot of options here. There's a lot of different ideas. So uh, one thing I just want to address is that yes, there are, there are bills that you may pay that other people think aren't, aren't really important, but at the same time, they're important to you. And right now, lawmakers are saying that we need to provide for the American people, give the American people their life back. Because right now, even though the CDC came out and said yesterday that, yes, if you're vaccinated, you do not have to wear a mask. That's great. But at the same time, taking a mask off doesn't mean you're putting money in your pocket. It doesn't mean you're getting your life back. Yes, now people can see your, your upset face because you can't pay for food. You can't pay for your rent. They're not seeing the mask over your, your face. So, you know, it's, right now it's like, okay, you, you, th you think I was smiling before? No, I'm upset. I'm depressed because I don't have my life back that I wanted, that I worked so hard for for 10, 20, 30 years. And it was all taken away in an instant simply because of this pandemic. And Democrats say we need to provide for those people, the hardest hit individuals. Those are the ones that we need to provide additional assistance for. So we will see what happens there. Something else that we're hearing though, okay? Yesterday we got word that cities and states could use their $350 billion uh, in additional you know, assistance or you know, relief for stimulus checks, for rental assistance, for other direct payments and things of that nature. But as of this morning, okay, I just want to reiterate this and address this because as of this morning, there's no indication that says any city, state, or county is going to, uh, you know, send out an additional stimulus check, is going to up the rental assistance past 100%, right? There's, there's no indication that this is going to happen. So I just want to be 100% clear that I want you to keep in mind that we will have to wait and see what happens here. Okay? And as we do, as we know more information, I promise I will fill you in on all those details. One thing I do want to address right now is something else that Democrats are fighting for. They're pushing and there's two different plans out there for a first time home buyers assistance program. One of the programs, because currently there are two, one is for a $15,000 tax credit, but you could, you could not have owned a home in the past three years. If you owned a home in the past three years, you do not qualify. If your income is too high, you do not qualify, right? But it's a $15,000 tax credit, which is going to be uh, used. You can go and use this uh, kind of as like your down payment. This is according to reports. The second bill, and the second bill is for $25,000. And this is the down payment for Equity Act of 2021. What we're hearing is this gives you $25,000 at closing only if you are a first generation buyer. Yes, a first generation buyer. This means if your parents owned a home, you do not qualify for this. It's a little bit more restrictive. However, the money is a little bit higher. And again, this gives you $25,000 at closing. So you can actually use this money as a closing, uh, at paying your closing fees, your closing costs, right? Escrow, things like that. So that would be good there. 
out of these two proposals currently, the one that seems most likely at passing at this time is the $15,000 first time home buyer credit. So just keep that in mind. But again, as of right now, there's no indication that this is going to be passing with the infrastructure package. It hasn't been proposed to be in it, but is this infrastructure? Some say this is because uh, buildings, homes, that is considered infrastructure according to most reports. So right now, lawmakers don't know whether or not this will be in the infrastructure bill or can they pass this as a standalone bill. But what we do know is that a lot of Republicans do not support this because yes, even though it'd be great for housing and housing prices would only go up, the issue is at this point is with inflation, housing prices are actually going to drop as we see the you know inflation will start to increase interest rates will have to go up to bring down the you know the risks of inflation and and overheating the economy and so right now what i can tell you is there's a lot going on there's a lot behind the scenes that you may not even be seeing but everything is is currently being worked on the problem is it's being worked on very slowly here's what i can tell you though Yesterday and the day before, so Wednesday and Thursday, President Biden met with uh, you know congressional leaders on Wednesday. He met with a group of Republicans yesterday. And what I can tell you right now is Republicans are not so optimistic that a deal is going to get done. They do not feel that the infrastructure package is even close to being passed. They do not feel like Democrats are even on board with where Republicans are at. Republicans are just not very optimistic a deal gets done anytime soon. Mitch McConnell says that they can't agree on the basics of the infrastructure package, so there's very little hope for an agreement, and some of the other critical pieces are most likely in question. So, this is just one of the reasons why people like Bernie Sanders are urging President Biden to just stop working with Republicans. They say there's no point to negotiate with the Republican Party because they have... Democrats have the power to do an additional budget reconciliation, which some question why waste the time to negotiate with the Republicans when we know what their answer is going to be. But Republicans say, why should we continue to negotiate with Democrats, try to pass a bipartisan deal when we know Democrats are just going to, you know, accept our, our bipartisan agreement, but then they're going to come back and they're going to pass whatever pieces of legislation didn't pass with them under the budget reconciliation. So in the long run, they say everything's going to get passed anyway. So really, what is the point? So right now, what we know, going the route towards a budget reconciliation, according to reports, is going to speed up the process. And it's actually going to give the American people uh, more benefits a little bit quicker. But just keep in mind, as of right now, there's not a lot of benefits in the infrastructure package for the American people directly. Some do want to see an additional stimulus check. Some want to see an extension of the unemployment benefits. But at this time, that is highly unlikely. Most uh, or pretty much every single Demo or Republican will not support an extension of unemployment benefits. And some Democrats, even Joe Manchin, does not support the extension as well. So as of right now, there's a lot of talks about how the Democratic Party is not on board with what President Biden wants. And because of that, it's turning into a big issue. So we will see what happens there. But one thing I can tell you is that Democrat Democratic Senator Joe Manchin holds a lot of the power right now in the Senate. So because of his uh, his ideas of, okay, we're not going to support unemployment benefits or an extension of it, that because of that, because of not wanting to do a budget reconciliation, all these different things, it's making it very difficult for not only President Biden, but any negotiator to try to get a little bit further because everybody has their own ideas, their own agendas, and their own plan of how they're going to move forward. So what I can tell you right now is there is a lot of talks and it will be interesting to see the updates over the weekend and even continuing into next week. So as we know more, I promise I will come back and share more. I just want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your Friday morning, Friday afternoon. I will be back on later on today to address any new news that we do here throughout the day. So again, just want to thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on and I'll see you guys on the next one.